Good evening, or welcome to the second Seamus Dean lecture. We started this series just last year, and um, it's called the Seamus Dean lecture because, because Seamus insisted that we. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. <laughs> it was my idea, and um, it's really to acknowledge. Uh, his extraordinary contribution to the intellectual life of this country and the wider world and uh, the powerhouse that he was with Field Day, uh, producing pamphlets and uh, the great anthology of Irish literature. And then there's his poetry and uh, his novels. But some of the pamphlets you'll find lying on the seats there, unwanted, and they're free, so you can take them. You know, we don't mind. Please, really. <laughs> um, the, the idea of doing this lecture was to venture into the staid and static public discourse that seems to exist at the moment um, and to kind of uh, move things on if possible or at least to discuss how they could be moved on. And to that end, tonight we've got two of the most uh, wonderful radical voices of my time. Um, Bernadette Devlin McAlisky and Michael Farrell. Bernadette is going to do the address and Michael will conduct the Q&A session after Bernadette has spoken. And now to introduce Bernadette, we have Sarah Campbell, uh, a lecturer in history at Newcastle University, who's just published a book on Jerry Fitt and the SDLP. So. <laughs> This is going to be good. <laughs> Sarah Campbell. It's probably the wrong place to say that I've published a book on Jerry Fitt and the SDLP. Um, thank you to Field Day for organising this event. It, it's, it's really great to be sitting in the front row with such distinguished people. I don't think I'll get to do that ever again. Um, I was asked to give a 10 minute introduction and a brief biography of Bernadette McAlisky. And I think it's a very difficult thing to try and condense an introduction to Bernadette McAlisky into 10 minutes. Although introducing Bernadette in Derry is perhaps redundant given she's one of the most um, familiar faces to the people here. It's a daunting and perhaps ill-advised task to try and create an image of Bernadette, who is an icon of the civil rights movement in the North and a very visible um, symbol of resistance to British rule. She has been called Fidel Castro in a miniskirt, Tariq Ali in a trouser suit, Joan of Arc, an upstart of the civil rights movement, and St. Joan of the Barricades. Yet Bernadette cannot be so easily pigeonholed and never wanted what she termed the fancy labels people stick on me. Bernadette Devlin emerged to prominence in Northern politics during the civil rights movement of the 1960s. As a psychology student at Queen's University Belfast, she played a leading role in the student movement, thrust into the position by the simple fact that she did not have the parental pressure um, to concentrate on dissertations, not demonstrations, as both her parents were dead at this point. She suffered the consequences of putting her head above the parapet and she was disciplined for her part in the movement by the Vice-Chancellor at Queen's and refused the permission to sit her final exams, not to mention a stint in prison for her role in defending the barricades at um, the Battle of the Bald Side in August 1969. In the discussions on the origins of the Troubles, very little attention is given to the student activism of the 1960s and the place of the university in creating a space where revolutionary and non-sectarian ideas could be shared and spread. Despite the number of works on France, Germany, Italy, Czechoslovakia and Mexico. These mainstream accounts of the civil rights movement in Northern Ireland have tended unfairly to sideline the student impact or represent it as an irrelevant irritant to the more sober, mature and minimalist activities of the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association and to the emerging political ideologies of newly energised nationalism, as Bernadette has retrospectively surmised elsewhere. The tendency to prioritise this elitist interpretation of the civil rights movement in accounts of it, including the emphasis on the middle ground mobilisations of figures like John Hume and the Social Democratic and Labour Party, have diminished and underplayed the radical and populist origins of the student wing of the movement. 
People's democracy played a very central role in shaping some of the ideology of the movement, as well as the new left in Ireland. Though through the, their connections that they had and networks with other organisations in Europe and in America. Bernadette's transnationalism and relevance was apparent when she received the key to New York City from Mayor Lindsay when she was on a visit there in 1969, which she returned by Eamon McCann to the Black Panthers the following year in a gesture of solidarity. Now, as the hashtag Black Lives Matter resonates across the US and the globe, demonstrating how far the movement there for equality still has to go, Bernadette's actions from almost 50 years ago attests to the global echo of struggle and the continued need to keep fighting the status quo. Her charismatic oratorical ability and presence hurled Bernadette into the political ring and a week before her 22nd birthday, she won the Mid-Ulster um, seat to Parliament as a unity candidate. The youngest MP at the time and the youngest woman ever elected to the Commons until 2015. <coughs> Elected Member of Parliament twice, she distinguished herself during both terms of office by a radical and un unorthodox approach to politics and to British parliamentary etiquette. Arriving for her first session in the House of Commons, fresh from the barricades of the Bogside, she broke all precedent by delivering her maiden speech on, the, on her first day, a speech which violently attacked the British for their part in the tragedy of Northern Ireland. One of the defining moments of her parliamentary career to, for me is when she slapped Home Secretary Reginald Maudling for his comments defending the paratroopers for their actions in Derry on Bloody Sunday in 1972, a gesture that I think has been vindicated given the findings of the Savile Inquiry. And I was meaning to ask Bernadette, we lined up some of the members of the current cabinet, if you could um, perhaps reenact that, <laughs> that particular gesture. She went on to campaign for prisoners in the H-Block during the prison protests of the late 1970s and the hunger strikes of the early 1980s. She was a leading spokesperson on the H-Block committee and is the only surviving member of that body, the rest having been murdered by loyalist paramilitaries. She herself was shot a number of times, as was her husband Michael, in an ambush at their home in 1981, but survived the assassination attempt. It is important, I think, not to confine Bernadette's role and significance to the conflict and to the past. She is as politically active and engaged now as she was in the 1970s and the 1980s. Currently, she works in a cross-community organisation, one that she helped to set up, the South Tyrone Empowerment Project, or STEP, that advocates for immigrants and other minority and mar marginalised groups, returning to the bottom-up community campaigning she is well known for. STEP is a matrix of the way the world could work, and considering that the refugee humanitarian crisis is one of the biggest crises of our generation, I think it is, is apt that Bernadette is at the forefront of tackling how we respond to it in a just, caring and meaningful way here in Ireland. Unlike many whose views moderate as they get older, Bernadette refuses to compromise on her principles and continues to travel beyond conventional views of and, and solutions to society's problems. Earlier this year, she, she successfully campaigned for Amy McCann's election to Stormont for People Before Profit. For me, this indicated that events had somehow come full circle. And it is very uplifting to see these two heavyweights of the student movement of the 1960s campaigning together again on issues that unfortunately seem to have endured unresolved for the last 50 years. The issues fought against in the 1960s still seem to be prevalent now. Somewhat ironic that the university question in Derry and the governmental neglect of the West of the Ban played a role in why voters turned to, uh, towards an alternative much like they did in the 1960s. Austerity, Brexit and an increasing gap between poor, rich and poor means that they have their work cut out for them. And I think in a year where commemorations of the centenary of the 1916 rising and the declaration of a republic have concentrated on not upsetting the forces of power on both sides of the border, and almost 50 years after the civil rights era, which still very much determines the course of events of the present period, it is perhaps an opportune time to take stock of where we are and figure out where, where it is we might go from here. 
So without further ado, it is a great honour and a privilege to welcome Bernadette McCallisky to deliver the second annual Seamus Dean Lecture entitled A Terrible State of Chazis.